I'm Steve for Those Equipped Cars, and today I'm here with my 1965 Innocenti S. In previous videos, I have featured some of the other Innocentis, including my completely restored Innocenti 950 Spider, which is an earlier version of this with a 948cc engine. The Innocenti S, like this one here, has a 1098cc engine. These cars are basically Austin Healey Sprites, with Italian bodies, Italian interiors, and Italian electrical systems. At one point, I owned five Innocenti Spiders all at once, and right now I am restoring another Innocenti S, so I thought it would be fun to pull this one off my shelf and see if we can get it running. Let's take a look around it first. This is the most complete Innocenti S that I have ever had. Yes, it needs some work, but at least it is all here. If we take a look on the inside, the original rubber mat is there. I have an original NOS dashboard to be placed up here where the old one is gone. All the gauges are intact. The only thing that is missing on this car is the radio. I don't have a key for the car, so the ignition switch is taken out. There's actually more room inside of here than there is on the Austin Healey Sprite, and I'll show you under the engine bay why that is. These doors are also longer than they are on a standard Sprite. Unlike the Bug-Eyed Sprite that came out at the same time, this does have a working trunk. You can see the original muffler. Looks like we might have a slave cylinder, some other things in here. Again, the rubber trunk mat is in place. It's also pretty amazing that the convertible top is this much intact. Underneath the hood, we have the same A-series engine that you would find in an Austin Healey Sprite or an MG Midget. Anyone familiar with a Sprite will recognize these humps over the front tires. And that's because the basic shell of this car is exactly the same as a Bug-Eyed Sprite. But the way they get more interior room, they have removed the battery from sitting behind the engine and moved it over to there. That means the firewall can come forward and the cockpit can be longer. Looks like this one has an electric pump installed up here. The radiator is completely different than a bug-eyed Sprite. This is an Italian radiator. For the electrics, we have a full-size fuse box, not just the two single fuses that a bug-eye uses. It looks like the generator is not in place right now, but all the electrics are Italian. The generator and the starter are both Magneti Morelli instead of Lucas. I do have the generator sitting around here somewhere. You can see with this fresh air intake, the heater core and fan setup is completely different on this car. This was a much more upscale and expensive car than the Sprite. We even have a work light under the hood. I'm going to put a battery charger on this battery, see if it will start to hold any voltage. And then we can start testing the car and seeing if we can get it to run. So the battery is charged at five volts right now. The, bat the charger kicked off right away, so there's a good chance that this battery is shorted out and no longer good. Glad to see that I was smart enough to tape the carburetors off before I put it up on my shelf so nothing could get inside the engine. If I want to see if it runs, I need to figure out how to turn on the ignition and the fuel pump. So I imagine some of these wires here connected to the ignition switch. So I'm going to play around for a second and see if I can get anything to work. Okay, I think activating this one here, this turns the ignition on. The fuel gauge is now working and my ignition light is on. This one here also turns the ignition on. Horn still works. Looks like the switch had four connections, which I think are this one, this one, this one, and this one. Looks like turning on the ignition will be easy, but I have not found anything that will trigger the starter. 
So let's take a look at that next. Down here is the starter solenoid. This one does not have a button to trigger it. Looks like everything is hooked up. All I need to do is take a screwdriver between these two posts. We should be able to see if the engine turns over. See if the engine turns. Wants to. When I was messing with the wires inside, when I turned the ignition on, it did not run the electric fuel pump. So I think it's bad. It's not even hooked up to the carbs right now. So I'm going to grab an external fuel source and connect it directly up to gravity feed these carburetors. Then we can double check that our ignition coil has power and see if we can start this. I haven't used my hot wire box in a while and since I don't have a key for this car, this is the perfect car to use this on. Just start connecting everything up. I think that's the starter. Yep. Now I just need to connect up my ignition. And this red one should be ignition. So you can just put that on the coil. I should be ready to try this. I'm going to put a spark tester on so we can see if we have any spark. If we do, it will flash right here. Okay, let's give this a go. Ignition on. I did not see any spark there. So we need to now take a look at the points. See if I can get the cap pulled off of here. Oh yeah, I can tell already these points are pretty crusty looking. I'm going to turn the lights off and we'll crank the engine over again. If this is working, we should see a spark. I don't think we're going to because I don't think the points are working. Ignition on. Look down there at the distributor. Okay, I actually did see some sparks down there. So I think the points are firing. So we should have seen some sparks here. So I think we are getting a spark. It's just not a very strong one. Since the cap is already off, I'm going to clean the points and we'll put it back together and see if the spark is stronger. I'm going to use my Dremel to clean this up real quick. That should be all it takes. Remember always to put your rotor back in before you put your cap on. Okay, I'm gonna turn the light off. We'll crank it over again and see if we get a better spark up here. Ignition on. Okay, I don't know if you could see that, but it was definitely flashing up here. I'll turn the lights off in the room and that way you can see the flashing here better. Okay, turning ignition on and cranking. So you can see we do have a good spark now. Now if we get fuel to it, this engine might run. I have my fuel bottle hooked up. It's connected up to the carburetors. Let's open up the valve. You can hear them filling up with fuel. Okay, we got a little leak over here on this one. I just give it a couple little taps with a hammer. Strange that some of these screws are loose. 
Maybe there was problems with that one leaking before. So I'm just gonna turn the fuel off now. Should be enough collected in these bowls to make the engine run. So I think I'm ready to try this out. Ignition on. This is, okay, that's not connected. The throttle return springs are not connected. Put a quick spring on here. Okay, I can use that now to open the throttle. This is the chokes here. Set the starter, see what happens. Looks like I don't have enough battery power to turn the engine over right now. I'll be right back. Connected up another battery pack. Let's see if this works. Turn the fuel on again for a second. Hold these chokes down. About to let the jump pack take a time out so we can try it again. Let's try a little bit of starter fluid. Okay, we definitely have ignition. Just need to get my battery to play nice. Let's give this another try. Wants to start. This is really close. I don't know why it's all of a sudden backfiring out the exhaust now. Okay, now I have a bad connection somewhere. Let's take a quick look at the firing order. So one is here, one, four, Three, two, one, four, three, two. Let's reverse these. Let's give this another go real quick. So that's what it was. The firing order was not correct. Chokes out. Okay, I don't want to run it too much because the water pump is not hooked up. So I think this is as far as I'm going to go today. I do need some parts. I need a rebuild kit for these carburetors. I need a fuel pump. 
I should probably get some points, a rotor, a cap. I need to find the generator so that I can put it back on to make the water pump run. So if you want to see me continue working on this car, comment below. Otherwise, I might just stick this back up on my shelf. So if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.